Seeing that it's 7.01 or 7.02, um, this, this broadcast is obviously broadcast is being broadcast. This uh, meeting is being broadcast. If anybody's looking to broadcast or tape it, you have to identify it to the chair. Anybody looking to tape it all aside from this? Okay. <coughs> Seeing none, I'd like to call this meeting to order. So moved. Um, and acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. Looking at the um, second agenda item, um, which is the walk-in period. I ask, are there any walk-ins? Seeing none, I'd like to move on to the third item, which is a discussion vote outdoor entertainment permit for the Sixwood <coughs> Harbor Yacht Club. I was wondering if maybe we move this to the end of the meeting. I take that back. If, if we could. <laughs> is there somebody here on behalf of the Sixwood Harbor Yacht Club? Would you please come forward? And what you're looking for, could you just identify yourself for, for the uh, record, please? Sure. My name is Club, and we are wondering if it's possible to have an outdoor entertainment this Friday for Luminaria Night from 6 to 10. Um, it's, for all, it's for families, and um, it's a great time. And I think one of the board members is coming to the party. Let's see, well, I'm not sure. I wasn't invited, so <laughs> I'm not sure which board member you're referencing here. Let's um, make a motion. <laughs> that's a hint. So th I guess that's a hint. Kim Brown is with on 10th. Uh, your address, just for the record. Yep, it's 410th Avenue. 410th Avenue, okay. And it's a disc jockey playing amplified music. We've approved other things like this for the Situ Harbor Yacht Club this year. There have been no complaints. Um, aside from that, any comments from the board? I think this this is an annual event, isn't it? Every it is, year, yeah. yep, every year. It's Luminari Night. And yep. we've had no complaints in the past, so I'm all in favor. Move the board selectmen vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Situ Harbor Yacht Club, 84 Jericho Road, for a disc jockey playing amplified music at Luminaria night function to be held on Friday, August 6, 2010, from 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. All immediate neighbors must be notified of this event. Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Unanimous. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Brown. Moving on to our agenda item number four, discussion vote of a hawker peddler's license for the farmer's market and an ice cream chuck and, if I'm not mistaken, two uh, the third one, which is... Um, Gorilla Enterprises. So, first, who is here on behalf of um, is Barbara Keefe? Could you please come on up to the microphone, please? Identify yourself and your address. Uh, it looks like 28 Central Park Correct. situate. Okay. Yes, I'm Barbara Keefe. And this you're looking to get a hawker peddler's license to sell equal friend eco friendly products. Just what exactly are you looking to sell? I know it's eco, so it's environmentally sound. I'll but what exactly? To my daughter-in-law. <laughs> I'm Paula Keefe. I'm Barbara's daughter-in-law. And what we're looking to do is um, sell environmentally friendly, safe household cleaning products at the farmer's market. Okay. We feel that this would be a great compliment. Not only are we selling local food that are good for you, but also um, cleaning products that would be helpful um, for your home. Um, our products are, are Wow Green is the brand name, and they are EPA approved products. They're um, only they're comprised of only four ingredients and they're actually ingestible so if a child or a pet was to eat or drink them you wouldn't have to call poison control um, we use them exclusively in our home I have children and pets um, and we just felt that this would be um, something that the Citra community would um, embrace given that um, you know people are looking to be more green and environmentally friendly these days um, me personally, this is passionate for me because I am the president and founder of the Go Green Web Directory, which is a state resource for, um, it's basically the green pages. So we're putting together a resource for those of us that live here in Massachusetts to be more eco-friendly. So this is how we became involved and we use them exclusively within our homes and we just thought that this would be a great compliment to the farmer's market. Just so long it's not BP endorsed, I'm all in favor <laughs> of it. We, we, we brought some to demo, but I'm not really sure that's necessary. Discussion from the board? I don't know. Just a quick, how many, pro is it one product? There's, a, there's 12 products because they're, they're household cleaning, so there's laundry, toilet, all-purpose, wood and dust. Stainless um, steel. Stainless steel, but each of the products is only comprised of those four ingredients. It's just a variation of how much of a, a it's a cell-based, um, a, a protein cell-based derivative water essential oil. So depending on um, what that particular product does, you would have a, a variation in ingredients, and that's it. But there's 12 of them. We would be looking to um, sell them individually. We have a stain remover that's called the Super Stain Remover Pen that we Which will take out permanent magic marker <laughs> from a carpet. We can even show you that. Wow. 
but I, just things that would interest and, and see what right. would interest the community. Right. We wouldn't be looking to you know push no, that's great. small yeah. containers. John, just one general question. I know there's been a huge demand for this market. How, how much more can we take in that limited space that we have? <clears throat> I, I, I've never been because it's during the day on Wednesdays, but are we getting to the maximum or are we? I, I feel we are. We are. I, I, I feel by the end of this season going into next season specifically, we're, we're starting to wind down August, September, and we'll see if we can manage into October. Um, the response has been phenomenal from the vendor side as well as the public, obviously. Yeah. How many more, but do we have room for two more people? So there's no space problem in terms of adding any more right vendors. No. Okay. Next year, I do foresee if the momentum continues, mm -hmm. we will see space as being an issue. Mainly for public safety, because there's so many children right. that are at market every week with the vendors and with our patrons. Great. Well, if you keep getting all the press you've been getting, then uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know this could be a good, a good, a good problem to have. You know. Any further Wait, questions? A motion? A motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a Hawker's Peddler license for Barbara Keefe, 28 Central Park, to sell eco-friendly products at the North Situate Town-owned commuter rail parking lot in front of the WA building from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays until October 31st, 2010. This license has a temporary waiver of the 15-minute rule of Selectman's policy, 4399. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Uh, any discussion from the floor? Discussion from the Board? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Good Congratulations luck. and good you. luck. Come see us. Yeah. We will. Um, I'm looking for Z ice cream, and I'm sorry, Zaid A Abu Sharik. Is anybody here on for that? Okay. Seeing none, I'd like to move on to the next one, um, which is um, a Hawker Peddler's license to William A. Severse, doing business as Gorilla Enterprises of 16 Upton Street, uh, Hanson, Mass. Uh, Mr. Um, Subverse. Subverse. Correct. Did I say that right? Thank yes, you. you did. Come on up. What are you looking to do, Mr. Subverse? Well, I'm looking to sell my uh, homemade uh, Bloody Mary mix. Gotcha. Uh, it's, I manufacture it at, at an approved restaurant in Bridgewater and bottle it there and distribute it from my house. You have any samples at least I, of the? I mix? was going to do that, and I said, "No, I better not because I can't bring in the alcohol." No, no alcohol, <laughs> just the just the, uh, the mix. That's all I asked for. Um, okay, we saw this before, and unfortunately, you weren't here for that. So, right. um, questions from the board? My only question is just a legal one, and I I assume I know the answer, but we don't have any problem selling alcohol-related things. Just wanted to confirm. And there's I no couldn't alcohol. imagine you would. There's, there's, no, there's no alcohol. There's no alcohol in it, and it's used for other purposes other than Bloody Mary's. Uh, Correct. I have so a couple of friends that use it as a marinade on their chicken. Then yep. I've tried it myself, and it's No, dynamite. it's good. It actually works pretty well on fish, too. Yeah. Everything works good on fish, Everything, though. Anything works. <laughs> but, yeah, okay, I just wanted to confirm that there was no implied thing. Mr. Harris, did you have a question? No. Nope. I'm sorry. No. Nope. 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 So and you good. make this in your ha or at a restaurant? At a restaurant. Do you have all the type of health? I have her uh, permit from the town of Bridgewater. Uh, it, she, well, of course, she passes inspection. She has a stainless steel kitchen. Right. And I use her dishwasher to uh, sterilize the bottles, make the mix there, bottle them, and cap them. And uh, our, our motion, our draft motion would explicitly note that this license would be subject to Board of Health approval in this town. Fine. I have, uh, like I said, I have her permit from the uh, Board of Health. In, I guess it's in just like making brownies, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Motion? Okay. Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to <coughs> grant a Hawker Peddler's license to William A. Severs, DBA Gorilla Enterprises, from 16 Upton Street, Hanson, Mass., to sell a Bloody Mary mix and marinade at the North Situate Town-owned commuter rail parking lot in front of the WPA building from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays until October 31st, 2010. This license has a temporary waiver of the 15-minute rule. Selectman's policy 43-99.
This license is subject to the Board of Health approval. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you Thank very you much. Mr. Good luck. Yes. Just a question on the um, one that we were going to hold off on until I assume no, nothing to do oh, you're on all the set, ice cream sir. truck. Thank you. He's not <coughs> selling ice cream in town now, is he? This ice cream truck isn't in town now. No, it is All right. not. Okay. No, it is not. Okay. Moving on, agenda item number five. We're looking to award a contract with the auditor from, uh, I guess, the town accountant. So, basically, Trish. Um, this contract actually um, was awarded by the prior town administrator for three years with a renewable option for um, two more, equaling five. As you may recall, the town hadn't accepted the statute to do that until last fall, and it's also over the threshold that um, under the charter and the board must approve it. So working with the current vendor, he uh, complied with our request for this one-year contract, um, which will do the FY10 audit. The FY09 management letter and audit is ready for you to review once we can schedule it. I might just do it sort of one on one with you uh, since your agendas will probably get busy in the fall. So, this is just a one year contract for the 29.9 for the FY10 audit, both town and school. So, let me back up. In other words, <laughs> It's one year contract. Were we under an obligation for three years and plus two, or, or where are we at with that originally? Uh, bid it under 30B uh, for three years plus a renewable additional two. Two, okay. Which we don't, didn't at the time have the authority to, to do. So okay. Where are we so now? So, where are we right now is what I'm trying now to figure out. We're doing out. a one year contract. Okay. This contract is professional services, so it's abs actually exempt under 30B. But um, when you do a three or five year contract, which we can do um, going forward, um, you do follow the 30B process to get the best price. But the only question I had was the pricing. Is that something that's reasonable? I have no it's basis to, to determine that. It's on the low end. Okay. The sa around the same numbers last year? Yes. And the same firm? Yes. Any motion? other question? Sure. Take a motion. Move the board uh, select uh, on. Oh. Can, I, can I have just a question? Yes, yes. Mr. Um, Murray. Not to. I'm in favor of this, obviously, but just for discussion. So this is a one-year gig. Is it common practice to change auditors every three or four years? Is this like many financial firms do or other board, other private entities do just as a matter of business to get a fresh look at eyes? Um, I've heard that approach. I've experienced that <coughs> approach. I really don't think it matters. Sometimes a new administrator will change it or go out to bid when they haven't been out to bid. Mm -hmm. You've actually gone out to bid, but your indicated available appropriation has been determining pretty much what you get for a bidder rather than the scope of services. Okay. So we'll be looking at that in a year. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Yeah. FY, for the, this fiscal year, for the- Correct. In FY12 for the FY11. Correct. Line. Correct. I'm all set. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Motion again. Move the board select and vote to award the contract for financial statement and single audits and Massachusetts DOE end of year report audit for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2010 to Roselli and Clark and Associates of 500 West Cummings Park, Suite 3500, Woburn, Mass, in the amount of $29,900. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris by a hair. Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Moving on to um, agenda item number six, which happens to be uh, an award contract for bucket truck. And on behalf of that is Mr. Bangert, Mr. Bangert from the DPW. It looks as though that what you're looking for is an appropriation from us. Well, you've already got the appropriation, but you're looking for us to approve basically a $70,000 for a, a 2005 international bucket truck with about 61,000 miles on it. It's been inspected twice by, by the DPW. You had authorization from a year ago at the 2009 annual town meeting for a brand new truck in the amount of $130,000. And so you're saving the town basically $60,000 by getting a used vehicle. Is there anything yes. else you'd like to add to that? 
Um, you actually took everything I was going to say, summarized it very nicely, and uh, I have nothing to add other than the uh, we'd like you to authorize the purchase of this excellent used truck, which we think is a good position for the town to be in because this truck that we have today from 1967 has uh, reached the end of its life. We would expect that this new truck, this new used truck, would probably last us for the next 15 to 20 years as well. So we're, we're very confident that uh, this is a good move by the town to purchase this truck. So, so these from the board? These, these two motions are to one, do the money, and then second, for this particular one. Okay. The first right. one is to temporarily borrow the money yep. from yep. the town yep. before it gets bonded. Okay. Motion? Please. Will the board of selectmen <coughs> vote to interfund advance borrow $70,000 per the recommendation of the treasurer collector? Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Any from the floor? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, move the board. Unanimous. Okay. Second. Will the board of selectmen vote to award the contract for the purchase of a 2005 international truck equipped with Terex bucket lift to James A. Kiley Company of Somerville, Massachusetts in the amount of $69,497? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. I assume you, the truck's going to be painted from the white that it is? or Keep it white. You're going to keep it white. Okay. Um, moving on to the next agenda item, which is an award of contract for Musquashka Pond. And on behalf of the applicant, it's again Mr. Bangert and Mr. Cafferty from DPW. Um, this is actually for our two change orders to Weston Sampson, which is a design engineer. Um, and the value is over $25,000, so we'll bring it before the board. Um, the first item is the town has submitted to the DP the application for installing the sewer in and around Musquashka Pond as part of the long-term plan of updating the town sewer. And the work is currently with the DP for review and comment. Um, we've had some changes with the design engineer, and we're looking for approval on it. Um, one thing we have them doing is applying for uh, low interest loans with the state revolving fund, which would be a 2% loan, which is um, actually a very good rate. Um, we have changed the design from the original pump station that was on the barrier beach and <coughs> applied it and put it to one, um, which will be less impact and allow us to go forward with it. We've had some additional survey work. Um, we also have the engineering firm doing the easement drawings. We have a couple easements that have changed around that we will have to get. And we're also looking for them to evaluate the Sandy Hills pump station, make sure we do all this work and the next pump station up the line can pump it to the plant. Mm. And um, also we want them to complete the SRF application through the water pollution and abatement trust for us. And the additional costs are estimated to cost $37,000 for this work. Questions from the board? Mr. Harris. Do you know at this time where the pump station is going to go? Did you say you're going to consolidate? Yes, we know, we know where the pump station is going to go. We just need an easement. Uh, uh, you know, no, it's oh, actually it's on, it's town, on town land. land. Oh, yeah, great. we need easements. Anytime we run um, the new sewer line down private roads because the town right. doesn't own them, we need to get an easement and file it with um, the Registry of Deeds. So it's, it's for that type of work. Two easements, construction and then a permanent. Right. Correct. Right. Correct. Where's the where's it gonna go? Um Pump Josh Hadley, again? we have the plans actually in the other room. I could have brought him in. Okay, no problem. It's I'll take a look. On the, uh, so what's the name of that street? Woods Ave? Eli? No, it's it's before that. Cut us off guard. Next time we'll Yeah, no, it. it's all right. I mean no bugs. Shallow. Actually the uh, the good news in this is that when the original project went forward it didn't it was not eligible for SRS uh, subsidized loans. It's mm -hmm. it's now become el looks like it's going to be eligible for that. So that's one of the reasons why we're asking for additional engineering money so that the permitting and application can be handled by them for us. So the fact that we're, the project is potentially now eligible for these loans um, will lower the cost of the project in terms of the price of the betterment for our residents. Great. Spending <coughs> money now is going to save us money in the long run. Exactly. That's also, great. Also, oh, are you done? I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Tony. Actually, hold on. Tony, Tony had well, a question. You can finish if you want to. Um, some of this funds, will it be to replace the water lines, or was that already That's thought the next, of? That's the next item that we'll, okay, we'll talk right. about. There okay. were two items on this. Right. Okay. Tony. So my question is more, these are change orders. 
So in the initial appropriation, are we still under? We're still under the appropriation. The original appropriation. But it's just over the value of. Okay. So I think okay. in our packet we did the second one first. Is that what's? So the first yeah. thirty thousand is for this one, which is applying for the loan, and removing the pump station, and the second one, which we'll get to a second, is that is that's the actual water lines. Correct. The water yeah. lines are Change the thirty thousand dollar ones. The thirty-seven thousand dollars additional correct. scope to. Um, okay. So they're just. They were just talking about yeah. this. Right. Yeah, do this. Just think about the sewer one first. Right. So the great, and both of them are within the original appropriation. <clears throat> the change order falls within the scope. The uh, sewer one is within the appropriation. Within the appropriation. The, sewer the water one would come out of the water funds. We're going into a new area with a water project in a second. Okay. Yeah. So the first one is this one. Do you want it's for a sewer, and it's within that appropriation. Right. And a few things in your, I mean, Al does a great little summary for us. Um, or Kevin, you know, we get the scope of what's going on. The two things that jumped out to me were the water lines are from 1906, and it's going to help reduce brown water, which I think we've all seen well, a little bit of. That'll late. be our next topic. That's the, the next other topic one. that I want to go through. That's not the this one? one. No, that's the next one. Seward, so Seward. 30,000, 30,000. Yeah, yeah, but that's we've been talking line. about this. Okay. Right. Two Just One of them. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Question, Mr. Just a um, general question. If I live in that neighborhood of Musquashkit and, you know, it would apply to the other ones previously, but if I'm in Musquashkit Pond area and I had just done a major upgrade, private system, can you just tell us? I might know the answer, but I'm not sure. How much time do I have to tie into the town sewer? Do I have to tie into town sewer? And what if I wait 10 years? Do I still have the right to tie in? Yes. I do. However you will be charged the betterment. Right, whenever that time comes. But if I had just made a major upgrade to my right. property, then I don't have to, to tie connect, in. Uh, and your, your continue to be, your property continues to be eligible to connect. But don't you only have a certain time frame by which you can pay the betterment over 20 years? If you tie in after X years, after too long, you have to write a check, right? Well, actually, the betterment starts the day that the betterment starts. And then once, once, once it's announced that there's a betterment, you yeah. have 30 days to come in and pay that off in total. Yeah. Okay. Um, or you can roll it into your taxes and then yeah. have it spread uh, throughout the 20 year period. And quite right. frankly, the uh, treasurer collector is more experienced in exactly what those steps are. But you have a, a yeah. period in which you can pay without interest the mm -hmm. uh, betterment in full or roll it over. That has nothing to do with when you hook up. Right. But if I, if, as Sean was saying, if I come in 10 years from now, and I want to hook up. I still need to pay. Well, you would have already paid the paid. betterment whether you hook up or not. You're going to have to pay the hook up for ten years. Right. If you just put in a new system and you happen to be on the street where a sewer is going, you you're have to pay paying. the betterment. You're going to pay that betterment fee. Ah. And then the question is: Assume that your Title V septic system fails, or you know, um, yep. and so then you can say, you know what? I'll pay the right the now it's five thousand hookup fee to cook in. I got you. So. Gotcha. Your property is bettered by the fact that it has municipal sewer. Sewer. access. It, yeah, yeah. It becomes more valuable. Got it. You could remove the Title V system if you wanted to. And mm -hmm. Yeah. And just Fair. one more. And if you had a guess, I'm not going to hold you to it. When would those residents be tying in? And I'm not going to hold one year, two years. I'm not going to hold you to it because I know DEP can, you know, have different ideas and um, changes and stuff. What I was what I was going to get in, into the second part of this oh, is, all right. the, okay. is the water lines. What, um, and I'll give the little my little talk on water lines. But um, hold on for, before you do, do though. Think, generally, um, it's uh, we're probably. I'd say it's probably 12, a two-year project. 12, 18, it's a lot of work. So, yeah questions from the board. I was going to ask if there are any questions from the audience before we move. Do you want a motion on Part B? Um, part A. Because they're, they're separate motions. Do we part, do part B is the one they've been talking part about. Part B. The 37 grand. Okay, I okay. started out of order. I didn't realize it was okay. going to be. Right, it's okay. Part B. That's why you're looking at the same thing I am, which is the 1906 water lines. Good. Okay. Why don't we do Part B? Move the Board of Selectmen award the contract amendment for the engineering services to Weston and Sampson of Peabody, Mass., for an amount not to exceed $37,000 for items 1 through 6 listed on the topic document pertaining to the Musquashica Pond area. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Uh, discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Now let's move on to Excellent. Part A. To water. Yeah. Um, the town has submitted to the DP the application for the sewer in around Musquashka Pond. Um, one of the problems that we do have is we're going to be repaving all these roads in this area, and some of our water lines date back to 1906. 
Um, we've got our life out of these water lines, but it's uh, probably time we replace these. So what I'm asking for is an additional $30,000 to award to Weston and Sampson as a change order to review and redesign, come up with a plan for replacing the water lines in the Musquashkid area. Um, we've got some lines like off Eli Ave that there might be a one inch or a two inch service. There's no fire protection over there because you can't attach a hydrant to a one inch service and, and it's feeding four to eight houses. So um, I think before we pave any roads, we have to update update those water lines. And that will be a source that, that is a source of brown water. Um, it's not the end all sources of brown water, but it is it is one contributor fact, contributing factor to that area. Um, and it would be an improvement in the system. So this is just for the design plan. Probably, depending on what the cost estimate is to do it, we might have to look for additional funds at town meeting next year to replace the water lines also in this area. But at least we're getting the design plan down and figuring out what we have and how much uh, implication we have. And by doing it this way, as, as, Kev, as, as Kevin's idea, is that um, Weston and Sampson has already done all the surveying, the test borings, uh, they know everything, the, the, the traffic work, um, they will know where all the properties tie in. They can do the engineering uh, in concert with the sewer work for probably one third of the cost of the engineering would cost ordinarily. And we know that for a fact because we know what it's cost us to engineer other water line replacements in town. So. It's uh, definitely the way to go for in doing this work. And another idea he brought to the table is that whenever we're going to do paving, we want to make sure everything under that road is in good shape for the next 10, 15 years. And these water lines break. They are uh, cast iron. They're the, they're the source of that. Those, the pipes I brought in before, you see the tuberculation, they call it, with the, all the uh, rust that builds up in it. Uh, this end of the line area uh, sees frequently brown water issues and this will go a long way towards eliminating those brown water issues bring better pressure to the area because we'll be going from six inch lines to eight inch lines or 12 inch lines and we'll be uh, better serving those residents but probably the cheapest possible way to replace the water lines is when we're doing the sewer lines questions from the board go ahead tom I just was to, to um, the money's coming from the water enterprise i mean this would come from the water enterprise water enterprise fund, fund. yes yes and out of retained earnings, Trish? How would uh, it's funded by the water appropriations. So it'll be in, you'll, you'll find it in this year's fiscal budget. Correct. It's in this year's fiscal budget okay. because money was awarded in the, in the rate increase we would be able to absorb it with. In this year's capital plan, we included money for engineering and replacement of water lines. Oh, so has there been an appropriation for this already? It yes. was appropriate. Okay. Yes. Thank you. It's also part of the five percent increase, correct? Right. 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 And it was funded yeah. by the five percent. Okay. Increase, I didn't so. know that it was already on. And what do you think the scope, dollar-wise, is for replacing the two million dollars to a ballpark to? F um, my initial ballpark estimate was one point four, maybe yeah. so one point six. So somewhere, somewhere between area. one and two million dollars to yeah. so to do the, the project. We can fund. And that's about what we've been doing every year. Great. Sean? Just one last <clears throat> question. You just reminded me of when you're <coughs> going to resurface the street, you don't want to have to dig it up again. What about storm drains? We just talked about that earlier. Well, we'll are, are, they, are they old? Do we even have storm drains? We do have some storm drains. Some of them are older. Some of them are newer. Um, a, a lot of times what we were doing is we would have either the highway department come in and repair the structures themselves or um, the contractor, we would, we would award them a change order to replace it as, as they went by and dug the area up. Is that something though we should look at though? I mean, because I, I mean, even if it doesn't have storm drains, obviously. It, it no. Um, we can, and we, we have looked at it. It's, you know, we can, we can do a whole lot there. It's just um, we, we get to a point where we start spending a real lot of money. Um, the, the only reason why I ask that is because right on that bend of Hadley Road, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a major problem um, mm -hmm. because of the development up, up gradient. And I know that, um, okay, they are, good. All right. Question about the um, other utilities in the area. I know when we were doing the cliffs, there's a couple places on Third Cliff, my neighborhood, so I'm very familiar with it, where there's the utilities are coming down the, the poles, and then they'll cross the street in the air to another pole, and then they'll come down and go into like the adjacent house, and I, and so you'll have like one wire just going across the street, and I thought only in hindsight, boy, it sh sure we should have been able to get the utilities companies to put that line underground. 
while the street was all open sort of thing. Is there good discussion with Weston and Sampson on the, uh, particularly these areas that get really windswept in terms of utilities? And I understand we're not going to be putting everything underground, but there might be some key places at the same time that the streets are looking at that the utilities could be brought in the loop to put a couple things underground that would, that would do a couple things. One, it would be safer and would also mean that cars and trucks going down the street don't have to worry about wires crossing the street as much. So just, if you could just keep an eye on that as you're moving forward on this. Utilities can't go underground unless the town has a bylaw requiring it, and then the surcharge is applied to the residents because yep. it's tremendous. It's about ten times more expensive for the utility to go under. Yeah, no, I'm I'm, aw I'm aware of that, right. but that at, at least in a couple key cases, it might be worth you yeah, know just just, just exploring it. But, I, no. mean, I think that that's something we can look at proactively going forward to yeah. put as many as we can underground. Yeah. Just for the exact example that you cited. Yeah. Particularly for a turn up the road. Yeah, particularly for a turn up the road, exactly. Right. Yeah. Motion? Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen award the contract amendment for the engineering services to Weston and Sampson, Inc. of Peabody, Mass., for an amount not to exceed $30,000 for water line replacement in the Musquashica Pond area. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. Discussion? Saying none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gentlemen, thank Aye. you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Unanimous. All right. Moving on to agenda item number eight, which happens to be a discussion and vote and finalizing the charge for the Pier 44 Building Options and Feasibility Study Committee. Tricia, you've provided us with this draft charge. Um, at our last meeting, we've had an opportunity to review it, take a look at it. Um, at this point, we're trying to finalize it so we can kind of move this forward. and. Gentlemen, what are your thoughts? I think we'd uh, like to have some discussion on this. Is uh, everybody had a chance to review the, f the draft and what are your thoughts about uh, moving on with the proposed draft? Can we start? Please, okay. Tony. Um, again, we talked uh, we talked about this at the last meeting. I thought it's very encompassing and a, a um, you know very good document. Um, the few things I brought up before. Uh, which I, a lot of people agreed with is getting the times within line so that we didn't have to worry about the money. I don't know if you want to go over the letter we got. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Um, in essence, what Tony's referencing, I'm looking for the letter. Our concern as a board is that the mitigation money, from, money uh, left over from the MBTA uh, needed to be spent as of October 31st of this year. And our concern as a board was that we needed to ensure that that money was not going to be lost and so um, uh, on behalf of the board, a letter was sent to the MBTA requesting uh, that they would extend the use of that money. And in particular, we, we had listed uh, various items that we thought we could use the money for, one of which was for uh, the Pier 44 um, feasibility study and, and potentially um, using the proceeds or the money for building it. So we received a letter July 28th. Uh, it's, it's addressed to me. It's from the Assistant General Manager for De Development. It's Mark E. Boyle and basically um, saying that um, uh, pursuant to our letter of July 15th, 2010, the MBTA mitigation funds, please be advised that the MBTA approves and acknowledges the Town of Situate's request and plan to utilize these funds for the purposes described in our letter of um, July 15, 2010. Moreover, the town's request to expend those funds beyond November 1, 2010 is approved. So having said that, um, now we're able to have a little bit more time to make sure that we can spend those and, and, and use them appropriately and, and adroitly. So that so, having been said. Yeah. So that was my biggest concern, that we didn't have the timetable set up in this chart. We're not going to be, um, you know, have us potentially um, at risk to losing the funding and that clearly that's not the case anymore um, the only question you know again I'm really excited about the committee getting together I think their job is to come back with a variety of options for us to to look at and ponder and hear all the details of for us to make the final decision on what is going to happen in that property um, my only question was the size of the committee and the makeup um, in the first paragraph here, we talk about nine people. I wonder if nine people is too many to be productive. We have a couple of, a, of people here that are maybe should be put on there. You know, one from public, one from rec, one from uh, council on aging. Whether 
whether we all feel that that's the right makeup of the group and then the six appointed ones. Um, that was really the only point of discussion that I had um, from the document. Um, sometimes I think if you get nine people on a committee, it's, it's sometimes that can be too big of a number. Um, but I think it depends on the makeup of the committee. So I didn't know what your guys' sense was on the size of the committee. Um, let's discuss that for a moment. Um, because you've raised a few points I think we sh it's, it's worth discussing. Um, initially, I'd say nine people, my personal view was nine people might be a, a good size, but I also, after going through the Affordable Housing Trust with the number of people there, it's sometimes the committee members, it, it's more efficient <coughs> to have a smaller number. Seven um, might be a, a better number. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm flexible. And, but, I mean, on the other hand, I'm not trying to preclude more people from participating. Um, nine might be great if some people miss the meetings then at least you have more um, at least more input I think other issue that you raised Tony that I've looked at I think a public building commission somebody from that I think should be on it because you're dealing with a public building I think it's important to have it raising the issue of whether or not somebody from the Recreation Department or Council on Aging should be on it not that I don't think they should participate I think I, I just the question is do we mandate under this charge that there has to be somebody from there. I, I, I think that's a fair question too, and I'm, I'm open to discussion on that point. Those are the two items that I thought you're right. Um, Mr. Chair, thank you. First, I'm, I'm pleased to see that we got that MBTA letter, so that, that's resolved in, in the rearview mirror with us. Nice job on that, Tricia, and, and everybody for working on that, and John for your letter, and Kim as well. Um, I have two comments that we will which, and the first is this one, which we'll talk about now. I do think nine is too much. Um, and uh, I think, I actually think we probably should not have someone from REC and probably should not have someone explicitly from Council on Aging because those are several of the potential uses that have been bandied about. And, um, but I do want to say that, you know, like you just said, John, that, um, you know, just because the committee might be smaller than nine doesn't mean people can't participate. And these, will, again, will all be open meetings and well advertised, and people can participate whether they're a member of the committee or not. Um, so I'd prefer to see it down to seven members. You know, when, when committees start up and a project, even one as visible as Pier 44 happens, everybody's like, oh, yeah, this is great, and it seems like everybody's coming out of the woodwork. But then when the dark days of January come and it's snowing out and, you know, do you want to do you, do you really want to get up and, and get going into that meeting? Attendance teams to, seems to drop, and then you could end up with, um, you know, quorum issues and all that sort of thing. So I think we're more likely to, to have success with a committee of about seven. And um, I do think we need to have, as you said, Mr. Chair, uh, someone from Public Building Commission, absolutely. Um, and I think we should, I'd suggest that we have seven members. We appoint six of them and uh, one is appointed by the public building commission and then i think it's incumbent upon us to um, review the applications and ensure we get a diverse set of skills in there and i, I hope people from you know an environmental side or or uh, people who are familiar with wa water permitting or permitting act permitting issues you know waterfront property people who know zoning people who know um, recreation or, or other things would apply and then it's incumbent upon us to staff this committee accordingly but I think we should should really do it that way Just, uh, Mr. Harris? if we if we so choose to have nine on this committee five have to be present for a quorum correct and if we have seven four yeah. I, I agree with what Rick you had said everyone's enthusiastic in the beginning but I don't, you know. The difference between four and five is only one. That's true. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's and, and uh, there were so many people that have, you know, yeah. approached all of us. So I, I, I could go either way. I'll pick my battles, and um, I, I'll give and have a little give and take on that one. But the representative from the Council on Aging, at the last meeting, and I could have gone either way. I saw both sides of the, that coin. But at the last meeting at the Council on Aging, they made it very clear to me that they would like a representative from the COA on this committee. Mm -hmm. Whether I agree with it or not, I'm bringing the, well, and I can see their point. Sure. So I'm not, I'm not saying I don't agree, but I'm bringing that message back that they yep. would like a rep from their organization. They even mentioned a person by name, and I think that person has written us a letter that said she didn't really want it to be in that position. 
but I haven't heard from the rest of the Council mm -hmm. on Aging. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone else wants to step up. Mm -hmm. There are about, what's our population? 18,000 people in the town. There are 4,000 people that are seniors. It's almost, you know, 25%. So of that, I would, I would, I personally would like to see someone from the COA in, on it, oh, along, with, along with public buildings. There isn't anybody that probably knows more about buildings than some of those people in that group. All right. Right. You have engineers, you have architects, and you have builders. I, I agree. I understand your point, and I, and I absolutely understand. And I just want to point out we're using Council on Aging just as an example here. It's not that we're, I mean, a very appropriate example, but we're not picking on one committee or another committee. I would have no problem with appointing somebody who is also on the Council of Aging. That's a citizen who is also on the Council of Aging, right? Mm -hmm. But that's very different to me from legislating that that, per a, that person a, a is A member there. has to be on the COA? Is right. that what you mean? All right. You know? Tricia, I got It's a subtle difference, but because I do think all constituents should be represented as well as possible, but I, I just hesitate about having it dictated to us question to you is that I noticed in the draft charge that under phase two that we as a board have the ability to um, the reserve the right to release members and appoint new members as part of phase two. Um, I think we need that language. I was going to say in phase one because one way we could address the issue is if we have that, I'm just trying to find it, maybe I'm missing it, um, it's later in, I think it's later. is yeah, that um, it's right here, page two. Where is it that we can release? Sorry. I mean, I ask that because it serves I'm... The, it's the highlight. Oh, right here. I, I'm, geez, it's the highlighted fo yeah. part, folks. Actually, Sorry about that. The, the preface there before the, the dashes, John, yep. it allows you to release members at any time and or to also appoint additional members. Okay. The reason why I asked that... Have seven and that could do two, two later or, you know, it gives you some flexibility. The reason why I asked that is because if it turns out that we went with nine and we were saying that, you know, they're going to have a problem with a quorum, um, I'll be candid with you. I mean, I can understand circumstances. If somebody misses two meetings, then my attitude is they, they, they don't have enough time to deal with it, and I'd be willing to pull the plug on their appointment um, to try to accommodate. I think the one thing about this property is obviously it's unique. There are a lot of people who are very passionate about it. Um, if you go with nine, there's going to be a lot of discussion. I hope it doesn't bog the committee down. Um, but on the other hand, maybe it will be some better input, more input. Maybe it's worth going with nine. If it turns out that it's sluggish and they're not getting stuff done or, or that um, um, they're, they're not able to have their meetings or their quorums because of the lack of, of attendance, then I'd be inclined to say then we'll pull that and then mm -hmm. say move it down to seven or, or accordingly. That mm -hmm. might be an option. Tony. Just uh, two quick points. I, I agree with you. My concern wasn't so much uh, <clears throat> the, the makeup of the committee at this point. It was whether nine can be productive and the meetings would take three hours instead of an hour and we get people disinterested. Um, the one thing that we just have to make very clear is that if you're not on the committee, it, it doesn't mean you're missing the opportunity to make the decision that happens at this, with this facility. We're the group that makes the decision. This is just a, a committee that's going in and doing the research and the groundwork and the brainstorming and, Advisory. Put, you know, um, if the committee's not going to come back and say, uh, build an arc there and that's what's happening you know they're going to come to us with five or six feasible options and then the board of selectmen at that time will make the decision as to what ends up being choose there so um you know maybe that being said and rick's comments that it's all it's an open meeting everyone can participate and whether you're sitting in the audience or sitting at the front table you're still going to have a voice and then ultimately it's going to come to this committee to make the decision may make some sort of an impact. Um, I think you were going down the path that says, look, let's try it at nine. If, if it's not working, then we can always change it to seven. Um, that's fine with me also. That's fine with me. So, uh, Tricia, to comment, you said something above the dashed lines there. You said it explicitly says that we can release or appoint. Right, the but second the, graph right there. The second paragraph of the, f right, of the page ten. one. Appoint additional members, or you reserve the right to release members and appoint new members. But it says as part of phase oh, two. Of phase two. I right. would like, correct. if we could change that to say at any time. That's what I was saying. I was saying maybe we should put in phase one and two. So at any time? 
Could we? So if we add language like that, that gives us the flexibility. Yeah, at any time. Yep. I, I would just say at any time on that. And so then, you know, given this conversation, um, and uh, Mr. Harris, your points about picking battles and so on, and Tony's comments and everything, I, I guess I'm, I'm fine with nine, but I would, I would still maintain that I prefer not to have it as scripted. I, I'm, I'm fine with actually, if we have nine, we appoint eight, and the Public Building Commission makes a recommendation to us as to who they think they appoint, and we approve or disapprove of that individual. But um, that would be my preference. And, and then someone from public buildings. That's what I mean. No, no, no. Someone yeah. from public eight buildings. At large, and then eight at large. Eight at large. And the Public Buildings Commission recommends to us who they think, and we approve or disapprove of that. Because there might be. So we appoint nine. Right. So we appoint all nine, and one of those would be um, either from a list or recommended by public buildings. And again, my comment about if one of those people happens to also be serving on, on the Council, of Age, Council on Aging, that's fine, just like if someone happens to be serving on, on zoning or um, you know, one of the other things. I, I do think, though, we will want to make, be careful that we don't um, you know, pick one person from planning, one person from zoning, one person that. We don't want a committee of committees. You know? We really do want these to be at large. One other quick question on this topic is, should a selectman be on this committee? I, I, my feeling on that would be um, no, because ultimately the selectmen will make the decision as to what to do with it. However, I think um, one of somebody from this board should be a liaison to this committee, and I think should attend the meetings as many as he can um, to kind of give us feedback on it. But ultimately, I don't think they should be a decision maker in it because I think ultimately we will be the one. I agree with John. Um, Liaison's good. So should, should, who's going to be the um, ringleader in terms of organization? Should we, is there any way to find that person? I, um, what do you mean? No, or should, like a I'll chair throw it like, committee? should Trisha be the chair? Should somebody, somebody. I think what we need to do is I think we need to identify the group of people, go through the process of figuring out who they are, and then um, when we select them, then ultimately we should, I think that's the way it's put here, they will have a meeting before us, maybe a, a, a joint meeting, is that, is that the, and then they will have to convene and, and appoint somebody to be their chair. Correct. Um, is that kind of? Yeah, I guess sense? we look at the applicants and see if, I guess that would be the first step. So I would, um, so, so that's my feeling on the, composition and are we in some sort of agreement on that or nope. just to sure. sum it up yeah. we're going to point all nine and we're going to ask for recommendations from public building for one public of building for one and then the modification is we can change that composition at any time good i have no problems with that are we okay with that Fine. and i will say this i mean with council on aging i'm not I'm not adverse to saying that somebody from the Council on Aging should participate. I right. think that's certainly. Right. If that person, I think what Rick is saying, if that person is seems to be a good fit, yeah, and the fact that they're on the COA, that's not going to help, not going to hurt. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, I, I just wanted and to be very clear. Right. I, I personally think it would help, but I just don't want it to be, you know, yeah. to be scripted. Mandatory. Okay. You know? All right. Okay. So if I'm hearing you correct, we're going to go with nine members on the board or the committee. Uh, all appointed by the Board of Selectmen. One, however, will be from the Public Buildings Commission, and they will nominate that person who we yep. will then. Or they can nominate two or three or whatever, and we'll pick one, how they, how, how they want to do it. Yeah. And aside from that, Tricia, the only changes that we'd add is um, at any time, the Board of Selectmen can discharge one of these appointees if we need to, okay. and the rest of it stands. Um, actually, yep. There's another issue I wanted to bring up that was oh, independent sorry. of the okay. Constitution. Okay, so we, we talked about that. Yep. We addressed Tony's. Mr. Murray. On the bottom of page one, it says, the, uh, as part of its charge, uh, the committee shall address the following critical issues during phase one. And it says, a priority list of issues. Uses. Sorry, a priority list of uses. uses. Um, my preference, I'm not exactly sure what's meant by that wording, and there might be other wording that I've missed somewhere else, but... I actually do not want 
a prioritized list from this committee, you know, that they say, we have our number one priority is this, and our number two priority is that, and our number three priority is that. Um, just because the committee um, may have all good intentions, but they still are unlikely to have the broadest view of all the things going on in town and all the financial um, ramifications thereof. What I would really like is this committee to give us a list of acceptable, from their point of view, through their, through their vetting process, uh, of you know these three things we think would be great. Um, there'll be an implied priority. I mean, any committee I've ever worked on or sat on or observed, there's going to be an implied priority anyways. But I just really would be uncomfortable having it so articulated that, like, this is our number one pick and everything else is, is secondary or tertiary to that. So I, I'd feel much better if there was, like, you know, the, these are the ones that we think would really work out well. Here's the constituency behind one of these. Here's the constituency behind the others. Here's what some of the positives of this one are. Here's what the negatives of this one are. Here's positives of the other one and negatives of the other ones. And just sort of give us the full, the full suite in, in that regard rather than, than picking uh, one or two or three in a ranked order. No, that makes sense to me. I, 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 I agree. I think uh, that decision is for the Board of Selectmen to decide. And, but the, the, this committee is going to put together some possibilities and for multiple uses or single use and come before us. We'll take a look at them and ultimately we're the decision maker. So they'll make a list of them and um, you know, I think that's a pretty astute. Any other comments on that or other points? I'd just like to thank Trisha again for putting together this this draft charge. I was anticipating a you know the standard half page, and then when we got this sort of thing, is like there's all sorts of issues in here I never even thought of that she you just anticipated and put together real well ahead of time and yeah. pre thought of everything. So thank you very much for this, Trisha. The one other thing that you know, Tony just commented on, which I think is true, we have these dates set for October, March 1st, is it? March 1st of next year and October 1st of next year. Should we make those dates? Not that we're trying to delay anything, but is, should we make them a little more flexible that it's anticipated that they should sh sh may have them by these dates as, as opposed to shall? Yeah, or that we have yeah, the we have, we have the ability to change. Yeah. So that way, that Some way. Sort I of mean, I, the last thing I'd hate to see is somebody come in here and say, you didn't finish this by March 1st, you know, and frankly, the committee might need another month or two to figure out things due to exterior influences, you know, for whatever. So what do we want to say, instead of shall complete, shall endeavor? Or the, the committee the shall endeavor to try to okay. complete phase one and phase two of its yeah. work shall have by as its goal. March 1st. That's good. Okay. As opposed to shall, take out shall and then no later than. And I think that, that gives it flexibility because it's like anything, the hope is to get it done by those dates. But that's a good point, Tony. So no motion is needed? Do you need a motion for this, or? Yeah, do. We need a motion, so yeah. I would uh, move that we accept the amended charge for the Pier 44 Building Options and Feasibility Study Committee as per the document presented to us tonight with the modifications that we just articulated. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani, a discussion? Any questions from the floor? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. So this is a, probably a good time to ask people to get in their applications. Good. <laughs> if you're interested, start uh, filing an application with our office. Um, and um, I, I think, Kim, there's one online. Is that it or is there um, for the form or is it something that... We do a form online and also people could simply write a letter of interest um, if they'd like to include their qualifications. They can. Yeah. It's not necessary. Um, also, I've received notifications from quite a few probably 15 or 20 that uh, I just I have their email addresses and I was going to take this opportunity to contact them again and ask them to you know, resubmit their it's just been one line of interest um, and some of those we for I'm I've been contacted by Ford I assume the same with you guys so be that would be great what I would like to consider and, and I table it for the board is to suggest that um, contact those people can um, 
if the press would be so kind to at least put it in the newspaper Please. once or twice, that would be helpful. Um, we don't reconvene until August 31st. Um, if you have those applications, at some point I'd like to have an initial meeting with some of the applicants uh, and then kick it over for the next meeting. But I think, is that September 7th? 7, yes. So that's like back to back. I'm not sure if that's too close or not, but I'd be happy to con entertain the boards. My thought is like if there's a two week interlude, meet people for <coughs> the final time and then try to finalize that board. Um, but I, the reason, 7th. My, my, the 7th or the next meeting, just so that if people are on vacation, 21. they might not hear about this yeah. because it's the month of August. So I just want to make sure everybody gets fair notice. Um, I, I know great. the news will definitely give them fair notice, but it's just, you know, if they're not there to read it. Um, I'd just like to add, I'll, I think, Kim, we can put the charge up on the website. I think this committee is decidedly different than some other committees in the past. I mean, it's the nature of the work of this committee is space allocation, building redesign, adaptive reuse. It's not um, sort of generic in terms of, oh, you know, could be this or could be that. It's some real, you know, homework, cost estimating, retrofitting kind of work. So I'd encourage people contemplating if they're watching to serve. We'll get the charge now that it's through up on the website and we refer to that. Good. So that would be good, and then we'll that's get them good, going in September. That's a good calendar. Someone, All right. Then someone yeah. might feel that they're not cut out for that, and and where they might have thought earlier, right. vice versa. Great. All right. Good. Congratulations. That's excellent. Let's move on to the next agenda item, which happens to be agenda item number nine. It's an acceptance um, of a gift from the recreation department. Would you like a motion? Actually, would um, the clerk? Mr. Vignani, could you just read what was sent just sure. so that people understand what we're doing? Sure. On behalf of the Recreation Commission, I would like to thank you. This is a letter to um, Mr. Jack, is it Steve or Steb? Uh, From the Situate Rotary Foundation. Steve. Um, I'd like to thank you for a donation in the amount of $300. We were able to provide a scholarship to a child to attend summer camp. We truly appreciate um, the Situate Rotary uh, Foundation's generous donation. And this is written from uh, Kim Peters of the Recreation Department. Thank you. Now I'll take a motion. Move the board of selectmen vote to accept the kind gift of a Situate, um, kind gift of the Situate Rotary Foundation for three hundred dollars. This generous gift allowed the Recreation Department to provide a scholarship for a child to attend summer camp. Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. Discussion. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Again, thank you very much for that. Moving on to agenda item number ten: <coughs> appointments. And what it looks like is that we have um, um, background. It's a, a list of the situate Republican and Democratic election workers as recommended by their respective parties. And um, so what we need to do is we need to, um, do we need to list, uh, read all of them, no, Kim? No, we don't. All no, we, we have to do is just say move. Move that the board of selectmen appoint Republican and Democratic election workers per the list provided by each of their respective parties. Perfect. Who wants to second that? Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. Discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen appoint Mark Sandham to the Street Acceptance Committee. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the Board of Selectmen appoint Harvey Gates as the Historic Commission's liaison member to the Community Preservation Act Committee. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Harris, good, unanimous. Thank you very much. Let's move on to the town administrator's report, agenda item number 11. Trish. Thank you. Um, in the packet, um, you have an attachment to the first item, which I hope one of you will read. Uh, the first item refers to the town settlement of the DPW union <coughs> contract. Uh, the board voted and approved the terms of the agreement at um, its last meeting and executive session. We can now make that public. Um, in short, it's a three-year contract with DPW Labor's District Council Local 1162. Um, it has previously been ratified by the union. Um, and as I said, there's a press release. And um, before I segue over to that, I just want to particularly commend um, the DPW union and the bargaining team. As you know, all the union contracts on the town side expired June 30th of 2009. 
Uh, so we're now entering our uh, 14th month with some contracts um, not settled. This is the first one. And um, again, I was very impressed with the quality and the caliber of the members in understanding the financial plight of the town. Thank you, Trish. And I have to say thank you to the union for, for uh, helping the town out and, and working with the town. It's, it's commendable when, when unions and towns and uh, the people benefit by it. And um, so commend them and commend you and the hard work that was done. And um, it's a quid pro quo. It's a great agreement. And we're very fortunate. Um, golf marketing. So did you want to do the do you want to release? Or do you want to read it? Or say, yeah, because I didn't say much thinking okay. you were, or otherwise I can get in the weeds with it. Sure. Okay, thanks. Tony, do you mind reading just with the release that we have? Great. Um, <clears throat> the Tata Situate and the Laborers District Council 1162 have agreed to a new three-year contract that will cover the period July 1st, 2009, through July through June 30th 2012 the laborers district council is comprised of members of the town <coughs> the town's Department of Public Works the current contract expires in June of expired in June of 2009 the new agreement calls for no increase in employees wage for fiscal year 2010 which ended June 30th a 1% increase this year and a 2% increase in fiscal year 2012 the contract also includes a new wage scale that compensates employees based on the number of licenses they hold, allowing the department to give greater flexibility in assigning jobs as a result of vacations or sickness and to increase the in-house capacity, uh, excuse me, capability for winter snow activities. The agreement also contains clearer language relative to the pr uh, pr probationary period provided to the town to implement biweekly pay and gives the town the authority to take certain actions for the purpose of securing favorable premiums or plans in the provision of health insurance. This agreement, this is quotes, uh, this agreement allows the town to make some management improvements and provides employees with the opportunity to raise their pay increments by obtaining additional certifications and licenses that will benefit the overall operations of the department, said Town Administrator Patricia Vichesi. I, I, uh, uh, I comment, uh, I commend the bargaining team for understanding the difficult financial situation facing the town and the cooperation and professional approach that they took in bargaining this new agreement. Board Chairman John Danahy stated the board is glad that this contract has been settled and that he appreciates the willingness of the union to help the town grapple with the town budget constraints. Thank you. Uh, the second item, which I've uh, included some detail is, uh, is on a new go golf marketing plan for Widow's Walk. Um, and as I note here, I've been meeting with Bob Sanderson over the past several months along with <coughs> Kathy Bullock, who's um, graciously donated her services to help us do some different marketing strategies at the course. Um, and as I note here, we're working on a new and improved website. Um, if anybody's been on the website in the last 10 years, it looks exactly like it did 10 years ago. Um, and most of those photographs were taken by the management company two man, you know, two contracts ago. So we have all new photos and Tom Rose is working on updating those. We have a number of specials, coupons, the online tea system is new this year. We've had a couple of briefs in the newspaper. I know here we've been working with the, the food vendor Jamie for specials mm. starting in September on Fridays, Nine and Dine, a number of other things. Um, and um, I mean, we're also sort of um, International Golf Maintenance is updating the environmental aspects of the course relative to its Audubon um, designation and being a first demonstration golf course. We're, you'll see the Audubon logo on the website. We just got those um, icons last week. Um, the golf course, I think, we all know is a hidden jewel, but it needs a fresh coat of paint in terms of reaching out to other people in the area. We're trying to partner with day trippers on the boats. There's a stay and play at the inn at Situate Harbor. Bob is working on some other discounts downtown. Um, the golf course lost $42,000 last year. Um, and I think the way the financial reporting is done in um, prior years maybe didn't make that as transparent as possible. Um, that is not uh, something to worry about. It has retained earnings and coming from a community whose golf course lost over half a million dollars for eight years. Um, you know, I think Widow's Walk is a huge benefit to the community and something um, 
that we should uh, continue with in its present form. But again, just needs to sort of remind the area what a great place it is to golf. So golf's off a lot this year due to the economy, but we're still maintaining our numbers. I check them monthly, and uh, we're very lucky with Bob and IGM and Jamie down there in the management. So I thought it was time to just give you a little update on it. We've been doing this for about, I think, since January. So. If I could also just give a, a plug there, I was pleased to see that you've been talking with Jamie Miller about the food operator. Those of us with young kids in, in particular, it's a really nice place. I take my family down there for breakfast on the weekend, and uh, there's all sorts of people down there, there's people with kids, people without kids, and it's spacious, and the food's good, and it's inexpensive. And So I think broad, I'm just using that as an example of, of broadening the base, broadening the clientele, because as you all know, I don't golf. It's just... Without my hockey helmet on, I don't do sorts of things like that. So, um, but there's a lot of different stuff that you can do down there. Um, and I think it's really good to, to broaden that base. Mr. Harris? I was just going to comment. I believe Jamie's doing that now. There's a woman's Monday night league. They do nine and dine now, and I've heard that, you know, his food is just fantastic. It's hard to squish the special in because we have a lot of regular leagues and outings during the week, so we've tried to identify times. And um, Jamie's actually looking forward to the Friday night one, so he can, uh, he'll have like a prefix menu of three entrees, I think, and then that's what you'll get. Yeah. Good. Um, and then the other thing sort of related to that is um, we'll be updating the town website, because again, um, a website, you know, needs to be static, and um, we really want it to, I mean, dynamic, not static. And, I was going to uh, say, wait a minute, it seems static. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to improve that. It was static. We're trying to make it dynamic. Um, wonderful website, but if you go to the home page, I mean, my eyes glaze over. It's too busy. There's too much in it. We're really just going to go to a very passive home page with just maybe one image, and then on the column sides or whatever, let people click to various links. We have a subcommittee of the technology subcommittee that's work made up of the support staff. I listed them here in your report, and I want to read them. We spent quite a bit of time, um, you know, making suggestions to the website, doing frequently asked questions for every department, and suggesting another things. It's a work in progress, but again, hopefully, you'll start to see some of those changes. Um, and those committee members were Nicole Harris in the building department, Maureen Galvin in the planning department. Sue Frankel in the library, Kathy Curran in the town clerk's office, Maura Glancy in the recreation department, and Patty Longley from assessing. So um, stay tuned, and we'll certainly welcome the feedback once it gets up and running. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Good stuff. That takes care of that. Moving on to other business, agenda item number 12. None. None. Ditto. Mr. Harris, none. Mr. Vignani? Well, I always feel obligated to say something, so. Uh, re really quick, just for those watching, um, our situate baseball teams have done phenomenally this year. Um, they've done well in the sandwich tournaments that they played in. They've done one well in the Williamsport tournament that they played in, and they're going to Cooperstown in a couple weeks. So uh, just a kudos to everyone going out and watching the games and all the kids that have played so hard. Um, good. Anything? So I was going to say, the only thing I was going to say is Heritage Day, folks. Oh, that's right. Uh, starting out with Luminary on Friday, if you can uh, get out to see the harbor, go out to the um, to the coast. It's going to be beautiful. And of course, on Saturday, the music and the vendors down on Front Street. Uh, there are also other events um, for like rowing, and I think the um, uh, what is it, the um, dory races. Sunday they have again the vendors and. And oh, there's the pig roast, and there's the golf tournament on Friday. So uh, take a look at the Situate Mariner. It has the, uh, the insert that describes what's going on with the music, music and the other items that are happening. And I think the historical buildings are open. So uh, get out there and enjoy it if you're around. Outside of that, that's all I have. Mr. Banger, you had your hand up for other business. I have a brief item of other business, if I may. Sure. I'd like to give you a quick update on the status of the water reservoir, the water supply, <coughs> and the water dam. Okay. Um, not that I'm trying to say no. I guess my, my problem is I think I might have to say no only because of the new open meeting laws because we haven't noticed it. So uh, as an issue, if it's a private citizen, 
uh, under walk-in I could, but as other business, I don't think we okay. can, Mr. Banger. That's fine. If what I'm if, not mistaken, it's a patient to topic only. What, yeah, what are the three items again, Al? It's just one topic, which is the status of our water supply. Not I notice the, that led to the water ban? Yes. I want to just provide them with an update on where we stand with water restrictions. Not that I'm trying to be I only say because it changed. The um, the open meeting changed in July, effective July 1st. Okay. And I am just just don't want to be a f Mr. Chair, a what if I were to ask you if there was a, any update on the uh, water supply stuff? Again, it still comes a problem because it's has, and the reason, folks, is this. Because we have agenda items, we list them so that everybody has fair notice of it. And that's the only reason why, if, if we raise something that wasn't listed, that was posted. I think you have to notice anything you, you know, anything so that I think you anything have. that we Alice discuss. Is that's sensitive? If it's it is time sensitive. All right. Given so that's the, the exception to the rule. Given the, given the fact that you won't be meeting until August 31st. Okay. Fair enough. Um, okay. I'd like to just briefly update you on the fact that, uh, as you know, about three weeks ago, we took our first step in water restrictions. We went to what we call Condition Orange which is the odd even restriction on outside use of water and that they must use water only after 5 p.m. and before 9 a.m. Uh, that step was taken to even out the extraordinary demand placed on the system which resulted in the number of 24-hour days where we had to operate the water <coughs> treatment plant which puts us into the max out supply mode. Uh, by going to that first step which was odd even watering we de evened out the demand so that there was a, a better ability of the water department with current systems to keep up with the supply. Uh, the next step that has to happen is if when the reservoir runs down to a certain trigger point, then we need to go to further restrictions, which is to restrict the use of water uh, outside completely so that the water can be used uh, for domestic purposes. There are some uh, limited areas uh, in which water can be used for health and safety purposes, such as dust control uh, on construction sites, uh, watering of uh, vegetable gardens, excuse me, watering of vegetable gardens and a few items like that. We are uh, about nine inches away um, from the point at which we will need to uh, enact a, a more, these more severe steps in water restrictions. Uh, if we have no rain, between now and the sele next selectman's meeting, then we will be announcing that there will be the next step in water restrictions taking place. So you know, we have to pray for rain, uh, which will then bring the reservoir back up to the point where that trigger point won't be reached. And these were trigger points agreed upon and voted by the selectmen in previous meetings when we established uh, in 2008 a water policy. Um, okay. Thank you. Al, one quick yes. question. So nine inches of, of reservoir is about one month's use? No, it, it amounts to the level of the reservoir against a reference point. We are now 51 inches below the top of the reservoir's uh, uh, measurement point. When we get to 60 inches below the top, then we're to the point where we're in a dangerous condition and we need to not dangerous condition. It's the point at which we need to further restrict the outside use of water. I understand water. that, but my question was the date that you gave. You said the end of the month. I'm no. just I'm predicting the, that that, time. that uh, it's going down about an inch a day. Okay. Uh, and so we are maybe six to ten days away from with no rain uh, and no change in usage uh, that we will be to the point where we will need to uh, restrict outside usage of water. But right. you can make that restriction without a selectman's meeting, correct? That's you, correct. You need to do it. You don't have to wait. That's so it might be sooner than that. Yes, it might be within the next six to eight days. And I, well, I wanted to update you because I wouldn't get a chance to do it before your next selectman's meeting. Mr. Harris? I was just going to ask you, I don't know if you know the answer to it. <clears throat> Does any type of rain help, whether it be a thunderstorm or would you, ra I know for lawns you'd have more of a real, uh, more of a gradual rain, but <clears throat> does it all go to our reservoir, one as good as the other? Actually, uh, in these circumstances, uh, heavy, fast, Rain such as thunderstorms are more effective in terms of getting the water. It runs off the soil and into the reservoir. The long, slow, dripply rain does a great job uh, moistening the earth, and that eventually then affects the wells. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're happy with that as well. Yeah, but but yeah. Uh, either rain is good. Uh, thunderstorms are better. As long as it's wet. I have to say, when I was driving here today, um, or driving earlier in the afternoon, I was looking out in the reservoir, and I mean, you see that tree there. I yep. call it Joshua's tree because it's just sitting there, and it's completely, you can <laughs> see the ground, you can see the rocks, it's pretty low. So. 
At home, I have my personal meteorologist who comes from a farming background who uses um, a device to track, has her own radar system, literally, to track the uh, rainstorms that have come across Massachusetts in the last two weeks. And for whatever reason, awesome. the clouds come, the rain falls, and then it moves up t to the north and to the south and just right. bypasses us. So right. by the grace of whatever, we haven't had the benefit of the rain that some of which has fallen in the area. It's been terrific sailing, though. Thank you, Al. All right, moving on to agenda item number uh, 13, correspondence. Do you want to let me read the first one since you've been doing a lot of reading, sure. Mr. Clark? Or the second one? Whatever one you want. All right. This is a letter from uh, Jack Conway and Company, the realtor, addressed to uh, John Dennehy as chairman. Um, and it's, it's uh, regarding the 4th of July celebration. It says, Dear John, many thanks to you and the entire Board of Selectmen along with the other town officials for being so magnanimous in your support of the 4th of July celebration, which was promoted by Situate Post 144 of the American Legion. From the first time that we called Kim Donovan and asked for an opportunity to speak to then-Chairman Joe Norton, the town was 110 percent in our corner. When you took over as chairman, you took over that support level, and it was most appreciated. All of the selectmen were great, as was our town administrator and the backup staff at Town Hall. Especially strong was our chief of police, Brian Stewart, who was always willing to help and always available for thoughtful direction and ideas, along with Chief Rick Judge of the Fire Department. As for your remarks, John, as for your remarks, John, they were fine. Thank you for bringing this story to our attention and tying it in with the idea of freedom in this great nation of ours. Best regards, Jack Conway. Thank you. And uh, there's another one um, from Jennifer Beecher. Um, I'm writing to express our heartfelt thanks to the town of Situate on behalf of my Pan Mass Challenge teammates. Katina Bentley, Tracy Gallagher Shepherd, and I, all for great, all grateful Situate residents, are riding this year's PMC for Team Luca. Our team rides to honor three-year-old Luca Delisi, a former Situate resident who passed away in 2005 after bravely battling a brain tumor. We recently held a fundraiser, Touch a Truck Situate, which could not have been more well received by our community. You may have seen advertisements for the, the, for the event around the South Shore. We are nothing if not thorough. Many genera uh, generous people donated their vehicles and time, and the event would not have been a success without their efforts. We would specifically like to thank Chief Stewart and Chief Mark, excuse me, Officer Mark Thompson from our town's police department. Officer Thompson was instrumental in helping the event run smoothly from providing initial consultation regarding layout, safety, and required permits to arranging the K-9 demonstration and being personally on hand the day of the event with his cruiser and willingness to make people feel welcome. We'd also like to thank Chief Judge for approving his department's involvement. The kids love the fire truck and the crew who spent the morning delighting wide-eyed children. Lastly, we'd like to thank our community, the town of Situate, including the Historical Society who graciously allowed us to use Larson Tower, the local post office, and the highway department for providing vehicles. They, along with generous supporters from the surrounding communities, helped make this event a success. Luca, sister resident and typical three-year-old boy, loved his mama and Dida, loved the harbor and sandy beaches of our town, and loved trucks. But less typically than a three-year-old, Luca never thought of himself first. He thought of others' happiness before his own. Because of this, I know Luca celebrated with us on that Sunday. Witnessed the joy of the faces of so many children and would be proud to call Situate his home. Again, on behalf of Team Luca, we thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our next agenda item, it's the minutes. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the following sets of minutes, March 17, 2009, August 4, 2009, <coughs> May 11, 2010, May 12, 2010, and June 8, 2010. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Moving on to our next agenda item, which happens to be pending litigation, collective bargaining, union and labor negotiations, non-union, and um, this is discussion that has to happen in executive session because it would have a detrimental effect if it were discussed in open session. So having said that, Ms. Donovan? Mr. Murray? Yes. 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 Thank you, folks. We'll see you on the 31st.